How are y'all doing today, man? This is a good day. Um, if you're a guest here, do you mind standing up and just saying your name? Start with you. All right. Praise God. From California. Praise God. From here. ever heard from me. Uh, as I studied throughout the scriptures, I began to realize that there was two subjects that were extremely important to God all throughout the Bible. And one of those subjects is brotherly kindness or brotherly love. The other subject is agape love. And we'll get to that next week. So when we start this message, I want to pray for us real quick. Let's pray that God be with us. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, thank you so much just for bringing us together, Lord God. I pray that you just uh, visit us with your spirit. Give us uh, the right discernment and wisdom in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. I got in a little lapel mic, man. I'm, I'm free. I might come down there with y'all. <laughs> Uh, so I wanted to start with uh, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 5. We've been working our way up this list because um, this is a fruitful growth of faith. The Bible says, add to your faith virtue. Virtue, knowledge. Knowledge, self-control. Self-control, perseverance. Perseverance, godliness. Godliness, brotherly kindness. Are y'all with me? And that is where we are today. And in studying brotherly kindness, uh, I realized something very special. There is a very special relationship all across the world between the brethren. Are you with me? There should be a common whether we're here or whether we're in Africa. Or whether we're in China with other believers of the faith, we should have a kindred spirit. And that is because Christ is in us and we have become a brotherhood in the Lord. A new family in the Lord. One in Christ. Male and female, Greek and Hebrew. All one in the body of Christ. And we share this and we have this in common. Throughout the whole entire world. Are you with me? Now the reason I say this is probably one of the most important messages that you hear from me. Because I feel like over time we have lost the understanding of how to treat our brethren. And how much God cares about how you treat the brethren. Are you with me? That's my catchphrase. I say it at least 90 times a service, so just don't, don't even pay no attention. So I wanted to start by reading to you the Greek. And this is a very familiar word, which I am sure you are familiar with. Has anybody ever heard of Philadelphia? You got one? Philadelphia is this word, brotherly kindness. Isn't that weird? They named the city Philadelphia after brotherly kindness or brotherly love. It's a compound word, word involving two words. Philadelphia, phileo, which is love, and Adolphus, which is brother. The love of the brothers. It's a love that Christians cherish for each other as brethren. A special love for those in the household of Christ. It is God's desire that his children become one. 
uniting together in forgiveness, humility, and love. And for this very reason, it is why God also hates contentions, divisions, envy, hatred, backbiting, lies, and gossips. Because it destroys the unity of the body of Christ. And God desires us to be one. When I was thinking of uh, examples of the, the love of the brethren in the body, and examples in the Bible, God illuminated in my spirit the uh, relationship between David and Jonathan. Uh, and that is found in 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 1. And I want to read real quick from this passage. It says, Now when he had finished speaking to Saul, listen to this, the soul of Jonathan was knit to the soul of David. And Jonathan loved him as his own soul. I'm going to read it again. I'm going to read it again. Is it, uh, it is 1 Samuel chapter 18. This is an example of brotherly love. It says, Now when he had finished speaking to Saul, which is King Saul, the father of Jonathan, the soul of Jonathan was knit together with the soul of David. The soul of Jonathan was knit together with the soul of David. And Jonathan loved him as his own soul. So when we speak about the fellowship of the brethren and our relationship with one another, we're knit together just like David and Jonathan. We should have this common fellowship among us, this love for one another. That our souls be united together like David and Jonathan. Uh, and, and man, I, I don't know about y'all, but I absolutely love the character of David. With his flaws, you know, he is what he is. But something about David, such a man of honor, you know. Such a man full of the anointing of God. Such a man who honored, gave honor and received honor. But most of all, he honored God. And his honor for God was a reflection in his life for how he treated people. Are you with me? I want to start the scriptures if you want to turn with me to Ephesians chapter 2. Because I think it's very important that we understand the body of Christ. And we understand what God is doing within his church. And we understand what church is. And we understand the prescribed goal for church and what the Lord is doing among us. It's Ephesians chapter 2, and we'll start at verse 19. It says, For he himself is our peace. Excuse me, number 19. Now, therefore, you are no longer strangers. Look around the room. You are no longer strangers. Are you with me? Hi. Hey, hey. And foreigners. But fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom the whole building being fitted together grows. The whole building being fitted together, we're being fitted together, grows into a holy temple in the Lord. So the whole body of Christ is being fitted together and we grow into a holy temple in the Lord in whom you are also being built together for a dwelling place of God in the spirit. It is not God's desire that uh, we be filled with the Holy Spirit in a cave all by ourselves. It is his desire to dwell among us as a people together. Amen. In unity, one spirit, one mind, one soul, yeah. one body. Are you with me? Yeah. And uh, if you will, skip over to chapter 4, verse 1. It's in the same uh, book, Ephesians. It says, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called. With all lowliness and gentleness, 
with long suffering, bearing with one another in love. Somebody say, in devouring. In devouring. Endeavoring? In devouring? The endeavoring? Where's my scholars at? Endeavoring. To keep the unity of the Spirit. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body, one Spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Yes. Go down to verse 11. It says, And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, some teachers, for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. How many knows we are the body of Christ? So for the building up of the body of Christ, till we have come to the unity, somebody say unity, unity. of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. That we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men in the cunning craftiness of deceitfulness Plotting, but, somebody say but. but. Speaking the truth in love, we may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together. Somebody say joined and knit together. Joined and knit together. By what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself, which is the building of itself in love. And I wanted you to understand that when we speak, look, I can move, Whoa, what's up? Here I come, here I come. I'm not coming, you can come over here. No, I want you to understand that Yes, our bodies are the temple of God. The Holy Spirit desires to dwell among us as a unit, as a people. And brotherly love is one of the uh, most important aspects of being a community of believers. Uh, brotherly love is about the love for your Christian brethren. Now, agape love, it takes it to a whole nother level. Are y'all with me? But uh, uh, brotherly love, this is the love of the brethren. Our special love for each other, for the body of Christ. And, and, and as a church, it's our design to build one another up in love. Right? Uh, it's, our, it's our responsibility. It's our job to, to cause growth to the body, to, to, to sharpen iron, sharpen iron, to grow and to build up, not to tear down. Right? Are y'all with me? So this Philadelphia explains the brotherhood. Have y'all ever uh, heard uh, the word brotherhood? Man, it's been used in the Bible since 2,000 years ago. The brotherhood. We're a part of a brotherhood. Are y'all with me? Yeah. I wanted to take you here because I think that in understanding what Ephesians 2, Ephesians chapter 2 is talking about, you can better understand what 1 Corinthians chapter 3 is talking about. Are y'all with me? If you'll join me to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, and there's a lot of scriptures today. I've actually uh, divvied some out so that uh, we can get through it rather quickly. Say amen. Amen. So chapter 3, verse 1 of 1 Corinthians. Y'all need to read this with me. And when I study the Bible and I see this, one of the things that I do to interpret a passage is I go before it and I go after it. Then you can better understand what it's talking about, agreed? And then you read the whole book. Then you read uh, uh, everything in context, scripture with scripture. That's, that's real study. Are you with me? 
Uh, and it's very important that we do this. Because if we don't do it like that, we're going to misunderstand the word of God. The letters in which was written to the church, we're not going to understand them. And, and let me tell you, uh, as much as I study the Bible, I always got to grow. I always learn. I'm always uh, growing and learning in the Lord and, and the connections get made and I start understanding stuff to a different level. But I have to keep studying. That's why I say I have to keep studying. We got to keep diving deep. We got to keep going. First Corinthians chapter three. Listen to what Paul is saying to this church. It says that our brethren could not speak to you as to spiritual people, but as to carnal, as to babes in Christ. I fed you with milk and not with solid food, for until now you were not able to receive it. And even now you are still not able, for you are still carnal. For where there are envy, strife, and divisions among you, Somebody say it with me. Where there are envy, strife, and divisions among you, are you not carnal and behaving like mere men? For when one says, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are you not carnal? And I wanted to read that to you. Uh, and, and I want you to skip down here with me to uh, chapter 3, verse 16. Because when I understood this scripture in this light, it changed everything for me. And you be the judge as to whether this is an accurate interpretation of the scripture. Chapter 3, verse 16. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. Now I want you to turn over to uh, chapter 4, verse 6. It says, Now these things, brethren, I have figuratively transferred to myself and to Apollos for your sake, that you may learn not to think of beyond what is written. That none of you may be puffed up on behalf one against another. Why am I showing you this stuff? Because I want you to understand that it is an honorable thing to be a part of the body of Christ. But how we treat one another, God is most definitely paying attention. How we deal with one another, we are dealing with the children of God. How many knows like David and Saul? How many knows that when Saul was delivered uh, to David's hands. David refused to kill Saul. Why? Because he was the anointed of the Lord. How many knows that the Bible says this? The Bible says all of you have an anointing. Come on. If we all have an anointing, shouldn't we also fear the Lord and how we deal with one another? Because if we really sought the scriptures and dealt with it in this manner, we would have revival. We would have a Bible if we feared the Lord in our communication with one another. Are you with me? Amen. That's why the scripture tells us to humble ourselves, right? To do other things, uh, everything for somebody else. You know, lifting your brother and above yourself. You know, this is right. This is good. This is holy. Right? But I wanted to show you that because there's also a scripture that says we are the temple of God. And it speaks in the single sense. And it's uh, talking about your individual body and it being joined with harlots and whatever else, right? So that is in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6. But in this particular passage, what if I'm right? Maybe I'm not. But this is how I interpret it. This is what I see. Because if I am right, one of the things that the church of God is missing is how we deal with one another. Because the Bible says... Do you not know that you are the temple of God? Remember what we read in Ephesians. Remember what we read in Ephesians, that we are growing together as a dwelling place for God, a temple for the Lord. Are you with me? And the Spirit of God dwells in you. If anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. Now, we've heard that scripture a lot. I don't know how y'all heard that scripture. 
But this is when I read 1 Corinthians chapter 3, chapter 1 through 5. That's what I get out of it. And what I understand is how we deal with one another. God is very present in that. And we need to respect that once again. We need to grow and understand just like David. We should fear to do wrong to one of the anointed of God in any kind of way. Not because we fear man, but because we fear God. Amen. And see, I've seen people speak like, I'm the anointed of the Lord. No, y'all don't understand. Everyone who's in the body of Christ is the anointed of the Lord. Yeah. Are you with me? Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And, uh, you know, I know you might not have heard it this way. And, and when I see it, it doesn't make any sense that God will destroy you if you're destroying your own temple. You're destroying yourself. Does that, do you understand what I'm saying? If you, if you translate it the other way around, that God will destroy you if you destroy yourself, if you destroy the temple, God's not destroying you. You're destroying yourself. Do you understand what I'm saying? But when you cause division or you cause uh, all these things and, and work against your brother, the Bible is saying when you work against your brother like that, God will destroy you. Amen. We need to get back to understanding the scriptures in this light. I ain't done. See, because this is one of those messages that it starts building and then you can start seeing. Are y'all with me? But I really feel like if we can get back to understanding how holy God's church is, how it's not to be played with, our, our, our actions with one another can cause judgment in our life. All right. Are y'all with me so far? Come on. Uh, so I also want to go to John chapter 13, verse 34, and then I'm going to have some people read some scriptures. John chapter 13. Listen to this very closely. Verse 34. And this is Jesus speaking. He says, And a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another. As I have loved you, that you love one another. By this, listen, all will know that you are my disciples if you have love one for another. So it is by this love that people will know that we are followers of Jesus Christ. It's by this love that people will understand that, oh, they're the disciples of Christ because we have love one for another, right? Scott, grab this mic, buddy. Uh, let's start with Brother Sean. I'm going to have y'all read some scriptures and I do this to speed things up a little bit. I didn't even know we were having communion today, and I was walking to the door, and I said, man, it'd be a great day for communion. <laughs> Praise God. And John's like, well, we have communion the first of every, every first Sunday. <laughs> man, I don't know what day it is. <laughs> Prepare your hearts to listen to the word. Go ahead, brother. All right, it's First Peter 22. Now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth, so that you have sincere love for your brothers, love one another deeply from the heart. Praise God. Amen. Say it one more time. Repeat it. Listen closely. Now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth. By obeying the truth. So that you have sincere love for your brothers. So that you have sincere love for your brethren. Love one another deeply from the heart. From the heart. All right. Go ahead, brother. Next one. Finally, I'm sorry, First uh, Peter three, chapter eight, or yeah, or eight, verse eight. Finally, all of all of you live in harmony with one another. Be sympathetic, love as brothers. Be compassionate and humble. 
Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult, but with blessings. Because to this you were called so that you may inherit a blessing. For whoever would love life and see good days must keep his tongue from evil and his lips from deceitful, deceitful speech. He must turn from evil and do good. He must seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are attentive to their prayer. Hold up, right there. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and he is attentive to their prayers. Is that the end of it? No. Keep going. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Who is going to harm you if you are eager to do good. But even if you should suffer for what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear. Do not be frightened. But in your hearts set apart Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect, keeping a clear conscience so that those who speak miraculously against your good behavior in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. Colossians 3, 12 through 14. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long suffering, bearing with one another, and forgiving one another, if anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. But above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. Praise God. Go ahead and read the next verse. Yes, sir, if you will. First Thessalonians 3, 11 through 13. Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus Christ direct our way to you. And may the Lord make you increase and abound in love to one another and to all, just as we do to you, so that he may establish your hearts blameless in holiness before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. Uh, and I'm going to read one final scripture for you. Uh, it's Philippians chapter 2, verse 1. It says, Therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interest, but also for the interest of others. Uh, and I'm going to, I'm literally, I got three more passages. I'm going to go through them really quick. Uh, but these are, these passages are really going to build on what we're talking about right here today. And I really feel like uh, God uh, led me in this direction because I, I begin to see it in the scriptures. And when I see it in the scriptures, I, I begin to ask God, you know, and, and start searching and digging. Uh, and I'm, sure enough, it just starts coming alive to me. It starts coming alive and I'm able to see it in the scriptures. And that's what I preach. And this is what I preach to you. Uh, and it's Luke chapter 17, verse 4, if you'll meet me there. 
Y'all got to open these doors. Luke chapter 17, verse 4. I need you to see this with me. Because I, I really feel like if we, we, we take a look at these scriptures, and, and we, we can't fix everybody around us. The Bible says examine yourself. My duty is to examine myself mainly, right? Uh, first, you get the log out of your own eyes. You can help your brother with the little baby speck in his eye. Uh, Luke chapter 17, verse 1. And this is Jesus speaking. Listen to this. Incredible. Then he said to the disciples, It is impossible that no offense has come. But woe to him through whom they do come. It would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were thrown into the sea than that he should offend one of these little ones. Take heed to yourself. Listen, what did he say? Take heed to yourself. Talking to his disciples. Take heed to yourself. Are y'all listening? If your brother sins against you, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. And if he sins against you seven times in a day, and seven times in a day returns to you saying, I repent, you shall forgive him. Now you know that is some hard uh, advice from Jesus that he gives to us. But what he's trying to tell us is that it is our duty. You can't worry about how other people act all the time. But it's our duty to obey the word of God and to do what is right before the Lord. Because why? Vengeance belongs to the Lord. Are you with me? God will make right what is wrong. God will ultimately be your avenger at all times. What your objective is, is to get on the right side of God at all times. When the Holy Spirit convicts your heart of things you, you, you've done, man, you need to make it right. Yes. And that's the key, man. Like, we're not perfect. You know, we are growing and growing mature and growing better and walking. Uh, but but the, the objective is that we grow. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. But God's desire is that we have this heart. That we're easily to forgive. How many times? 70 times 7. Wow. Because it's more important to be in unity with your brother. Uh, now this next one is uh, Matthew chapter 5 verse 23. Are y'all all right in here? You know I love you. Know. Life is good. Matthew chapter 5 verse 23. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar, and there you remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go your way. First, be reconciled to your brother. Remember, we're talking brotherly love here. First, be reconciled to your brother, and then you come and offer your gift. Matthew chapter 8. Verse 15. Matthew chapter 8, verse, it's chapter 18, excuse me, verse 15. And this is Jesus himself dealing with us on how we deal with each other. Matthew chapter 18, verse 15. Are y'all with me? It says, Moreover, if your brother sins against you, and you go tell him his faults between you and him alone, if he hears you, you have gained your brother. But if he will not hear you, Take with you one or two more that by the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. And if he refuses to hear them, tell it to the church. 
But if he refuses even to hear the church, let him be to you like a heathen and a tax collector. How many want to know? That's some very strong language. People used to respect the men of God, the church of God, the people of God in these kind of manners. It's like we've grown uh, closer to the ways of the world and how we do things. Like it's okay for us to be offended and be mad at each other and not forgive each other. And, uh, that's not the teaching of Christ. That's the world. Amen. Are you with me? That's the world. And what, what, I, what I want us to grow conscious of is that there is an almighty God whose eye is on his children. The Bible says it would be better for a man uh, to be thrown in the river with a millstone wrapped around his neck than to cause offense to one of these little children. Are you with me? And then what does he say? Take heed to yourself. He's talking to us too. You know, we always want to put that on somebody else. He's talking to me. He's talking to you. Are you with me? I don't know if you know, but uh, Moses stood out and judged the matters of the children of Israel day and night. Are y'all with me on that? He was standing out there all day. It's the same instance where Jethro came and was like, man, you're a man. You're going to wear out, and then all the people of the children of Israel are going to wear out, and you're going to cease to exist if you keep doing this. Right? And then God gives them the 70 people anointed with the Holy Spirit to do this. But just as Moses judge the matters of the people so God will judge the matters between his children and what I'm telling you right now is that you be found on the right side of grace and we're going to get ready for communion right here but I've got one more scripture because I'm telling you a lot of people are being a, uh, or they feel like they're being attacked by the devil and this that and the other but really it's because you're not following the scriptures you don't understand that when you do something to one of the little least of these, you do it under Jesus himself. That's what Jesus says. That's a, a big deal. Are y'all with me? Yeah. So no matter what anybody else does, the Christianity that we should have, we should humble ourselves. I'm talking to me too, you know. I want to grow in this kind of love, you know. That we would honor the brethren. To have a a uh, uh, Philadelphia, a brotherly love among us, humble and full of grace, right? Forgiving and loving one another, right? First Corinthians chapter 11, and we're going to get ready for communion. And like I said, man, I didn't plan this. I don't keep up with days very good. It's a wonder I preach on time the messages that I do preach. Uh, First Corinthians chapter 11. Are y'all there? Verse 27. It says, therefore. Well, the title is examine yourself. It says, therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and of the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unma uh, unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Somebody say to eat and drink judgment to themselves for not discern, discerning the Lord's body. So y'all think that God still ain't active in these things? This is the New Testament scripture telling you to have reverence for the things of God. Because when you do things irreverently, you're reaping judgment to yourself. Let's keep reading. For this very reason, many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep which die, it means die. Many have died. For if we would judge ourselves, someone said we would only judge ourselves. We would not be judged. 
But when we are judged, listen, this is the Lord's intention. When we are judged, we are chastised by the Lord that we may not be condemned with the rest of the world. Are y'all with me? Can, are y'all get what it's saying? Our objective is to clear ourselves and judge ourselves and examine ourselves as to whether we are in Christ. Right? And if we judge ourselves, we wouldn't have the judgment that's against us, this chastising. But thank God we're being chastised. Because that way we're not condemned with the rest of the world. Why are we chastised? So we get it right. Like a father who raises a child. He whips them. I mean, how's that whipping works? Proverbs says he spared the rod, he spoiled the child. Look my son over here like, like, get out of here, dude. So let's uh, end this message. But understand, like, dude, we're a part of a bigger picture here. We're the body of Christ. We're the anointed of the Lord. Right? Amen. We are called to a fellowship that is unlike uh, any other fellowship in the world. A, a, a feast of love. Are you with me? Amen. And I pray that this year and the following years, that man, we would just grow in this. And God would increase this love in us. This humility in us, you know? This forgiveness in us. How I many know some of you uh, can't heal on the inside because you still have not forgiven? Amen. I'm telling you right now, it's Amen. for your own good. God wants to heal your heart, but you have to forgive. Amen. You have to obey the words of the Lord. Are you with me? Who's uh, administering sacraments? Come on up here, I'm going to pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, I pray that we just take this message with us, Lord God, and teach us to be your children, Lord God, and how to be in this earth and to treat each other with kindness, to lift each other up and build each other up, Lord God, and grow in our discernment and how to walk among your children and in and out of every place we go into with the Spirit of Christ and to grow in that Spirit, Lord. Teach us to be your children in this earth, Lord that we might be the disciples of Christ and it might show by the love we have for one another in Jesus' mighty